Greetings and salutations, everyone, and welcome to tonight's second half. Before we jump into this very important second half, a couple links. As many of you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. Merch is displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nett only. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support this channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe, it doesn't cost a cent. Click that like button, takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because these things really do help this channel to continue to grow and go, and yes, folks, they definitely do matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump into tonight's second half, shall we? All right, folks, this second half is a reintroduction purposely done because of tomorrow's upload. Tomorrow's upload has a lot to do with this very important uh, interview and information that was shared with me via a subscriber. Um, there are a lot of things going on that our government does that is not only dangerous, but it is going on right under our noses, right through our towns, past our children's schools. And one simple incident could result in a massive tragedy. Tomorrow's first upload is going to fill in a lot of blanks that this upload leaves. Let's get into it. So I open this email and it's very short, very politely written. And there is a uh, paper clip, which means an attachment. I open the attachment and it's a ID, federal ID for a federal park ranger out of Tonto National Forest in Arizona. And he says, I have some very damning evidence against the United States government that I'd like to share with you. Please do not share my ID, that is for you to validate who I am. Please do not share my name because there was multiple park rangers on duty that day that are now still, like myself, retired. Um, but I need to share this with you. I've sat on it for far too long and it, the experience that I'm going to share got stirred up um, about a month and a half ago when he was watching YouTube and one of his other creators that he watches talked about this. And he said, I didn't know if I should reach out to this man. Um... He may after this, but he reached out to me because of the simple fact that the animal attacks that I talk about, the cover-ups that I talk about, um, and the relationship that I had or have with Victor, that was probably the key factor. Um, and he said, I know 
when I saw the photos of the emails that you shared, um, CIA.gov, UCIA.gov, I knew that you were going to be the person I was going to share this with. Now, this gentleman has been sitting on this information for almost 30 years. Um, 26 years. Actually, more. 20, about 28 years. When we talked, he said, first and foremost, this is who I am. I'm retired. I was a forest ranger, federal forest ranger. Um, I carried a handgun. I, you know, loved his, he loved his job. He raised a beautiful family. Um, being a forest ranger, <clears throat> it was his life. And he saw quite a bit that didn't make sense. But the thing that stuck with him the most was this case that I'm going to share with you now. He has seen Bigfoots, um, and I say multiple Bigfoot, Bigfoots, Big Feet, uh, and he believes that he's seen dogmen, but dead. He's seen some other things that he was not able to explain, uh, paranormal and for those of you who know, the Tonto National Forest is in Arizona. There's a lot of Native American. It's steeped in, in rich Native American history. Um, well, he was about a month and a half ago watching a YouTube channel. And he said, my jaw dropped to the ground. Um Former park ranger, he was a series 0025 at the Tonto National Forest. Um, showed me his credentials. <clears throat> he watches a lot of YouTube um, as being retired. Uh, fishing channels, um, woodworking, uh, Hitchcock or Hancock, the, the old guy that likes to shoot rifles. We talked about him for a little bit and, um, a couple of other kind of cryptid channels. Uh, one, Mr. Ballin. We all, we all, we all watch John Allen. I mean, that guy is a friggin' legend. Um, and that's the thing that struck the, the nerve. I hadn't, <clears throat> I hadn't watched the video that he talked about, that he, the case that he talks about in this video. And he said, Jeff, do me a favor, watch the video and call me when you're done watching it. That way, you know, what I'm going to share with you is true. I'm like, okay. So... I guess after he was done picking his jaw up after he had seen this video, um, you know, he watches How to Hunt, David Politis, uh, me, a couple of other, other channels um, that I'm not too familiar with. Dark Waters, obviously. <clears throat> but, um, so this is the, I'll give you the gist of the incident. <clears throat> of what the news this is the the public information so date was May 27th 1995 uh, a truck driver named Devin Williams was in Kingman Arizona 
lives with his family in Americus, Kansas. He'd been driving for roughly three or four days, just nonstop trying to get back home to his family. Um, inside this trailer that the news public information said they, that they was carrying vegetables and fruits. Um, in the video, uh, John Allen, Mr. Ballin, said that it was strawberries and lettuce. Uh, Devin was a large guy, uh, really kind of a westerny tattooed, just a big, big intimidating guy, but a big teddy bear. Loved his family, very family oriented, just a, a really nice, wholesome individual. So I'm going to quick go through the um, public information. I guess he calls his boss, says, I can't sleep. I'm going to drive and then I'll take another break. I want to get this done so I can be with my family. Well, <clears throat> I guess as time goes on, um, he calls the boss and says this to him. I believe this is on a Sunday. And uh, Monday morning comes rolling around. Where he's supposed to deliver this um, shipment is calling his boss. He's like, hey, you know, my driver is one of my best. He'll be there. Give him about half an hour, you know, 45 minutes to an hour. He's going to be there. I guess they don't hear from him for, you know, a couple hours. They call back. Where is he? Okay, well, you know, this is 1995, so pre-cell phones, can't reach him on the CB radio, I'm assuming because it would be out of, out of range, and um, Monday night comes, <clears throat> and his boss gets a phone call from Devin's wife. That pings it for him because Devin is such a family oriented guy he immediately calls the police to take a report um missed the deadline and he calls the sheriff the local sheriff station from where he's at the sheriff says you know listen we'll we'll find him we have ways of dealing with this we can you know uh, it's like a, a root system, kind of, you know, like the fingers go out and they can find out where. Well, they do. And um, in Coconino County, Arizona, the sheriff says, we, we got the truck. We don't have the driver. The truck is an impound right now. And um, we don't know where your driver is, but we have the truck and trailer. Now, this is, we're going to go back in time to Sunday where everything starts. All right, so I did get a lot of this information that I'm going to share with you from that video that I watched um, on Mr. Ballin's channel. I am not a storyteller. I am not John Allen. I don't have the skills of storytelling that he does. I research things and I share it. Um, <clears throat> but basically, Sunday, a couple of campers are camping and they see this monster tractor trailer come flying through the park 
and they're like, what the hell? <laughs> they see it come back through. Um, previously, they were like, hey, you know, maybe this guy got lost. He's looking for a place to turn around. Boom, it comes back. They're like, yep, that's what happened. Boom, it's coming back for a third time. And they now see a car coming from their vantage point. They can see the tractor trailer. They can see the car. The truck or the car can't see each other. People are yelling. They say, hey, you know, pull over, get out of the way. I guess the guy sees the rig, throws it in reverse, and pretty much crashes into the woods to get out of this runaway tractor trailer. When they see Devin, he is this blank look on his face. Like he's just uh, a blank look, you know. He's gripping the wheel tight, but he's not, he's not, doesn't look angry. He doesn't look happy. He's just blank. So about an hour, hour and a half go by and this family is hiking. Um, you know, this is the, this is the sixth largest national park in Arizona. Um, out of the nine. So it's a it's fairly large park. Now, this family comes to this kind of meadow field area and they see this truck parked, right? And they're like, the hell? The dad says, wait here. What's the guy, you know, what's this driver doing? Maybe, maybe he's stuck. Maybe we can help him. Let's figure out what's going on. But stay here, please. I don't want you guys to, you know, Guy's like, hey, you all right? Devin turns around and looks at this father slash hiker and does some very intimidating and very strange behavior. He opens his mouth as wide as it can go, closes it, and starts clicking his teeth well kind of moving his jaw. Just a really strange thing to do. <clears throat> and then says, the only words that are said is, I did not do it. They did it. The guy's like, shit, I'm out of here. This guy's making some kind of weird face says this weird off the wall comment to me goodbye so he gets out of there eventually i don't know if they called the police contacted the police or if just the i'm imagining they did or the campers did it's kind of Not really known who did at the time, but the the deputies come and they find the truck, okay? Now, this is where things get strange, um, because this is where uh, John, we'll call him John Doe, Ranger John Doe steps in. And so the deputy finds the truck and the truck's locked per the news truck is locked running with the vegetables still in the truck <clears throat> now at this point they're like where the hell is Devin. He's not broke. He has a, you know, family, new home. They have money in the bank. They're happy. <clears throat> so the police are like, well, he didn't run away. Maybe he was kidnapped. Who knows? Two years later, two hikers in the approximate you know in the same area 
approximately the same area of where he, Devin, was last seen. His skull is found. And that's where what we know of the public information is shared. This is where John Doe, Park Ranger John Doe, shares with me. <clears throat> During the investigation, after the truck was located, it was said to be full, but it was not. Some hours later, two helicopters land and six men out of each helicopter get out of the six men each out of the helicopter long guns spoke with the sheriff on duty and whoever was the head honcho of the park rangers it was not john um, even though he was in a series 0025 position, which just means he had uh, seniority and some power. And I asked him, I said, by me sharing that, will that? And he said, no, there was enough of us there that had um, that qualification. We were, you know, we were all there for a long time. We all had pretty much the same kind of um ranking and job so these helicopters <clears throat> land the six men on one helicopter head out the other helicopter they head out one way they go in opposite directions kind of <clears throat> not like this but kind of like that And two days later, the helicopters are radioed. Now, mind you, there's park rangers in the area. They're kind of like, what's going on? They keep, you know, going out and, you know, making sure everything's okay. Um, to retrieve something. Well, the... the one helicopter leaves and comes back about 45 minutes to an hour later with a large, hairy creature that was not a bear and was not a Sasquatch, was a dog man, what he believes was a dog man. Um, his boss i guess told was told you know that this is this is a large wolf well he's worked this area for a number of years there is no wolves like that in this area and wolves don't get that big and he knew that and he said also wolves don't have uh feet that have arches and they don't have feet. They have paws. The next, an hour later, the second helicopter leaves and comes back with two bodies in this kind of like cargo netted thing. They all land. Um... The men are, or the, the rangers and deputies that are on the scene are kind of not quarantined away, but they're kind of pushed back. Uh, military vehicle comes in. These three creatures that are dead are loaded up. And <clears throat> they leave. Now... Devin is certain, um, certainly not seen. He's not. He believes 
that The trailer, this is where it abs absolutely even gets more sinister and a little more strange is that when the park ranger deputy were on the scene before these mysterious military like um team comes in they look at this trailer there is no fruits or vegetables in it that's what the news told us what's in it is what appears to be some kind of cage cages and chains with large kind of claw marks along the walls of this trailer John Doe Park Ranger is certain that Devin was carrying these creatures to the park for a release something messed up um, or he, Devin felt bad about what he was doing. He doesn't know. But John Doe Park Ranger had heard the interviews with Victor and heard about like his dad's stuff in the timeline and this and that. And it matches up to when things were really going on, when a lot of these animals were getting pushed out, placed different places, um, animals, creatures. Now, I said, what do you think happened to Devin because of the skull? And he said, I truly believe that he was either attacked right after the family left by the dogmen or whatever creature was in those cages in the back of that trailer. Or when the teams came in, he was taken care of, possibly buried. Maybe an animal came and dug him up and that's how the skull uh, was found on a trail. He said, but we did a search and we could find it, nor hide no hair, hair of him. At the end of all of this, NDAs were, were signed. And like I said, he's been sitting on this information since 1995, 1997, when he saw the video pop up he was shocked just shocked that someone even knew about the story it's a story that's not talked about it's not a missing 411 it's kind of just flown under the radar for a reason because it is a cover-up and this is not my words this is his he saw what he saw. He is pretty much felt like he did uh, a disservice to the public and to his family by holding on to it for so long. But once again, he never really forgot about it. But it happened, and he kind of just, you know, years go by, and you're working, you have a family, and it, it doesn't leave your brain, but it kind of sits on the shelf. And it was just that one video that triggered it. And um, to me, everything that John Doe Park Ranger shared with me from his federal ID to 
why he believes it's a cover-up makes perfect sense to me. Uh, it fits the criteria. Why isn't he a missing person? He disappeared or a missing 411. Why wasn't he talked about? Because it's not major national news. But it does fall into that category of missing 411. It's missing in a national forest. But once again, when the government wants things covered up, they can do it very quickly and usually very adequately, which in my eyes they did because I've been looking into these strange cases and I've never even heard of this man, you know, and you'd think it would fall into the category, you know, human skull found two years after the fact that this all took place. You know, not not what we just shared with you from John Doe, Park Ranger, but the public, public information. So, that is what was shared with me. Last night, I honestly was, after the conversation, after I watched the video, after everything, I really kind of just sat here Googling and reading and was shocked and really felt like, wow. And then I started to think about other cover-ups, Tony Aarons, Amber Miller, Christopher Whiteley, Brenda Hamilton. And then other missing 411s, Dennis Martin, you know, the two Navy SEALs that disappeared in Yosemite. Um, Kim, I forget his last name offhand, but, you know, it's, it's definitely not a normal case. So after all the conversation was done, um, he asked me, you know, what do you think? What do you think the cages in the truck and the chains were for? Can you ask Victor, please? And I said, I have not spoke to Victor um, in about a month. But if I do talk to him, I will most definitely talk and ask him. Um what he knows of this, but from what you just shared with me, everything that you laid out and how you laid it out was horrifying, points to everything and every way that any of these government covered up, government and media covered up attacks, government and media covered up missing people happen and it it fits in that realm of the deceit by the government. And, uh, you know, I, he asked once again, please do not. And I said, listen, I said, I do not break confidentiality. Um, I appreciate you and I appreciate you sharing this. All right, guys, some very, very frightening information coming out about the government and what they are up to. Obviously, those of us who research and who really look into this stuff know this stuff's been going on for a long time. Uh, just how deep does it go? I think it goes fairly deep deep. I think it goes deeper than we think. And I truly, truly believe that our government is using deep underground military bases 
to house these creatures, to hide these creatures. I think they are creating things that have no business walking on this earth. I don't believe that they're creating dogmen. I believe dogmen have been here since the uh, since before humanity, maybe around the same time. But what the government is creating is something so evil, and it's not just our government. It's it's the world government, the one percent, and that's who we really need to be careful of, because they've got their mitts and everything. All right, folks, like I said, this has a lot to do with tomorrow's upload. Uh, the gentleman that I spoke to earlier this afternoon is going to share some more information with me in about an hour from now. Uh, what I got from him earlier today had my mouth agape. And I've known... And many of you have known that our government is uh, very crooked, very shady. But the lack of the lack of, I guess, concern for its people and. property, etc. is very, very concerning and just really is disgusting, if you ask me. Anyway, uh, it's all connected. We know it. We've known it for a very long time. We've just tried to connect the dots. And as time goes by, the dots get connected, and uh, we don't like the picture that it makes, do we? Anyway, with that, guys, thank you for supporting the channel. It is your support that continues for this channel to grow and go. And also, what gives people a place to share their experiences, ideas, and theories? Ridicule and judgment-free. Just treated with the simple respect that we all deserve. Stay safe. Happy, healthy, and ever vigilant. Keeping an eye on our children, pets, family, and friends. These creatures are real. They are out there. And they are dangerous. Share this information with those you love and care about, and it may just help save their lives someday. Until next time, never stop asking questions, never stop searching for the answers, nor the truth, and God bless.